I'm feeling flustered this morning. There's a funny thing about dreams. It takes you somewhere else for days, weeks, or just moments, and sometimes you can't pull yourself out of what you experience there. We were at a diner late at night with a bunch of friends celebrating. For some reason, my boss, Jen, was there. Uh, a fit, young mom, blonde hair, really nice lady. Uh, we're all ordering food. For some reason, I can't read my menu. Um, I'm not disorientated like I was drunk. I just felt confused. And I finally decided what I wanted to eat and we had been sitting there for over half an hour. Nobody else's food or drinks had arrived. It was really suspicious. The entire restaurant was empty. The lights had gone down, almost like they were closed. But for some reason, our table was still brightly illuminated, like one section of the restaurant was in a different like dimension or a different time of day than the rest. So I got out of the booth perturbed that I wasn't able to even place my order and everyone else's food is probably done already. Um, and someone else noticed that it was dark. They came with me. Um, there was a little group of us, about four people. Um, some woman, I don't know, but at the time she was a close friend. She was walking in front of me. She also had blonde hair. She was about Oh, five foot nine, so a little taller than me because I'm only five six. I remember staring up at the back of her head and she was wearing a ponytail. We start walking past the bar section. There's two men behind me. Thank goodness someone strong is coming. <laughs> and we go through that little, those revolving doors, you know, they, they flap open and closed in those old kind of diner restaurants. Um, vinyl seats everywhere with glitter, really cheesy stuff. Um, we go through the doors and there's just bodies everywhere scattered all over the kitchen floor. The entire staff was killed and there was blood everywhere. Now, Somehow, I had switched bodies, and I was the woman in front of me, the tall ponytail blonde lady, and she screams. I can feel my throat straining as someone else's voice escapes my lips, and we look down, and there's the waitress. She cracks her head around, and she starts to get up off the ground and she makes a foul, like, screeching animal noise, like some kind of distorted jaguar. And she lunged at me, and I put my hands up in front of my face to cover me, and my right hand, I felt a pressure, and I looked down, and she has her mouth on my hand, and she bites down hard enough to break through my skin and tear off, basically, the whole right side of my hand. and. I could feel the flesh tearing, and I could feel her screaming even more because that was fucking painful as hell. And this waitress lady is just going to town and eating me alive, and I can feel it. And it hurts a lot. All the fibers of my stomach were being torn open by her hands. She was just bluntly piercing through all the soft parts of my body. Now at this point, I switch back to myself, and I'm looking down at the situation, and everyone is just stunned. So I'm frantically, you know, looking at my surroundings, find a knife, because we're in a fucking kitchen, thank God, it's a fat knife. And I just start stabbing the shit out of that crazy waitress lady, lazy bitch who didn't fucking take my order. And I just, yeah, lay into her. And I killed her. And I felt her warm blood on my hand. And when she was dying, she did this weird convulsing and shit came out of her mouth it was like a bubbly goo and I turned around and look at the guys behind me and they just jaws to the floor turn around and we start booking it out of the kitchen and we start telling everyone holy shit you guys we gotta go like there's something fucked up going on back there um, everybody's dead like all this shit and even now just thinking about seeing all the bodies and feeling my hand being torn to pieces and my stomach and all my insides. There's nothing I could ever compare to that. 
anyways, we go back to that table where for some reason it's still brightly illuminated. Everyone's having a fucking jolly old time being ignorant to the fact that we're all about to die. And the room goes dark. There's candles lit up on the table surrounded by a bunch of old folded parchment paper. And they had my name on them and they were numbered. And I had to read them in order, obviously. I've read mystery, like mystery novels and shit. I like Batman. So I opened the first one. I don't remember exactly what each one said, but of course, progressively, the more that I opened, the more fucked up and weird it got. Um, it said, I've been watching you. I've been waiting to take you. And some of the papers I remember just had my name written scribbled all over it and there wasn't even a message it was just fucking weird and my friend cam was there and then some of the pieces of paper had her name scribbled all over them and i was like well this is not good and the last one i read it said one of my cats has been following you i have eyes everywhere you can't hide from me i dropped the paper onto the table and looked up and everyone's faces were just dripping with horror. Like, they were freaking out. I don't even know if everybody else saw the bodies in the kitchen yet, but that was enough for me to be like, well, what the hell's going on? So the dream went to the next day. Suddenly, I don't, there's, you know, no memories of going home, none of that. And we're all together again and the press is everywhere and they're asking us questions and um, you know bombarding us about the murders and everything that happened and the police were surrounding us kind of escorting us for questioning and all this weird shit because this was a massive crime that they hadn't seen in quite some time in this town I was in I was in a really big city um, it felt like New York but I've never even been there, so I can't tell you, but for some reason I knew just the way it was raining and there were so many people everywhere in the cars. Um, after the questioning, which apparently wasn't important because I moved on to the next phase of the dream and I was driving my car and Cam was with me and she was like, we have to go hide or something like that. And I was like, and I'm driving my car still right now frantically because we feel like we're not safe anywhere. And I was like, dude, I can't go to where I usually stay, but I need to get Brandon because I usually stay with my boyfriend, Brandon. And she was like, no, it's not safe. We can't do that. And she was freaking out and made me pull over and she just got out of the car and left. And we weren't in the middle of the city at that point. We were kind of at the outskirts by some weird park or something. So I kept driving. I was going to Brandon's house and I just I had to talk to him. I needed him there because he was also um, taking he was there for when everything happened at the restaurant in my dream and stuff. So I called him and it was really loud. I couldn't hear him on the phone. He couldn't hear me. I was just trying to be like, hey, where are you? I need you right now. I remember him saying, like, I'm drinking. I'm at Dustin's house. And then it was really loud and audible. I could hear like music, a specific song that I knew in my dream. But of course, in real life, I don't even know what the fuck that song was. It's probably not even real. So I'm driving in the city. I'm trying to get to Brandon's apartment. And I'm going uphill. And all of a sudden, my car stops working in the middle of traffic. And I'm going backwards. And my brakes aren't working. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, here, this is where it starts in every horror movie. Like, the car stops working. Bitch gets fucked up. So I'm freaking out, trying to drive backwards down a hill in the rain because it's still pouring down rain and the lights are fluorescent flashing everywhere reflecting off the raindrops off all the puddles I'm seeing light trails as I'm trying to frantically swing my head around in every direction to make sure that I do like stop safely somehow so I end up somehow pulling and like parking on the side of the road and I get out of my car and I don't even know where I am at this point and then I look up and I see a crosswalk and there's Brandon just walking angrily and I was like hey Brandon he's like what and I was like dude 
Where's your phone? I was just talking to you because the entire time I was driving up until I stopped, I was talking to Brandon on the phone, trying to figure out where he was, and I just needed to have him with me because I love him, and you need to be with people you love when you're going through trials and turbulence and all that traumatic shit. So I'm like, hey, Brandon. He's like, what? And I'm like, where's your phone? I was literally talking to you less than five seconds ago. And he's like, I left it at home in my pocket or like I left it at Dustin's. He didn't, he didn't have it was the point. And he was like, we were talking on the phone like 20 minutes ago. And I got pissed off and decided to just walk home because if you were going to be there, I needed to be there for you. And I was like, first of all, that was not 20 minutes ago. And what the fuck is going on? And I was trying to explain to him as we're walking into the apartment, he's still kind of huffing and puffing and being upset that he had to leave because I called him and told him I needed him. And I was like, I'm sorry that you wanted to keep drinking, but I need you. And then we're walking up the stairs and this apartment complex is unlike anything I've ever seen. It's like out of a scene from Harry Potter or something weird, just the normalcy is still there. There's no magic, it's just a huge turquoise painted room that the stairs just climb up in almost a cartoon fashion because it's so tall. They just careen up stories and stories and stories because there's no elevator. Instead, there's just stairs that spiral all the way up the inside of this hollowed out room and you get off at the proper floor from the staircase. And it had like a really rickety kind of two by four feeling. It didn't look like a really stable staircase. Um, all over the walls, there were just pieces of like show flyers, advertisements, help wanted, just pasted all up the entire sides of the walls. Even though it was really late at night, there were still a couple people down in the lobby on the very bottom. They had a couple old couches and um, lamps and like books and shit, just, you know, background scene stuff going on. So I put my hand on the rail and I can see that, you know, light blue turquoise paint flecking off, wondering how long it's been since anyone even maintained this wooden staircase. And we're walking up and he was just so angry and upset. And I just kept thinking about all those bodies on the kitchen floor and that chick attacking me. And I was trying to tell him about it and it didn't make much sense, even though he was there because he never came back to the kitchen. And then I woke up because Brandon came home from the gym and opened his door and I was asleep. And he said, hey, baby. And I was like, hi, sweetheart. Welcome back home. And that was it.